All right, Luke chapter 1, verse 38. And now Mary has just had this proclamation over her that she's going to have this baby and she's going to call him Jesus. All right, and so uh, she's got to get ready for this. And this is Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing that you have said happen to me. In other words, that she had to fall pregnant and that the Holy Spirit was going to come on her and that she was going to be the mother of Jesus. All right. Then the angel went away. So she stood there and she actually had to make a choice to say, God, I am prepared to allow you to use me. And I want you to say this, God always gives us a choice. All right, you always have a choice. You can choose not to do what God wants you to do, what God has purposed for you, what he has mandated you for, what he has trained you and equipped you for. Or you could sit down and say, listen, Lord, I am your servant. I'm here to serve you and whatever you want, I'm going to do. And just like Mary had to make this choice, knowing that this was going to be that Joseph had to cover for her. She did not discuss this with Joseph first. You know, most of us would say, God, I thank you for this opportunity, but let's discuss this first. Work out the cost properly to see if it's going to affect others around me. And then we'll decide. Or are you actually going to take the step of faith and say, God, if you said this, I'm going to do it. But God, you're going to have to sort out everything else because I can't do it. Many of us don't know what it is to walk in blind obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us will still try and bring it into a balance or an understanding or something before you make these calls. I want to say this, the season that we are in, God is calling us to make these calls. God is calling us to step up and do what he has called us to do. And not to question him. Remember this, when you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you say this, I am the Lord's servant. Whatever the Lord says, I'm going to do. Whatever the Lord has asked me to do, I'm going to do. Are you truly at that point? Are you truly at the point, like Mary, whatever you say, let it come unto me. I'm going to take the consequences. And you must understand, that statement that she made had the risk of her being stoned. Remember, there was a very strict rule that if you were pregnant or if you had slept around before you were married, you were going to be put to death. Mary had no idea what Joseph was going to do and how he was going to react on this news. She had no guarantee that he was going to cover for her. And yet, she did what God called her to do. She made a decision based on the word that was given her. Now I want to say that it's really important that we understand this. Because God is going to get us to places where we are going to have to rely on Him and only Him. And when God speaks, we are going to have to say yes and God is going to have to sort out the rest. And so saints, this morning when we come around the table, let us understand what instant obedience is to the Lord Jesus Christ. What does it really mean when God gets hold of you and says you need to do something? Because I can tell you now, many, many decisions that I have made would have been changed if I had listened to people. There are many times where I know God has spoken to me and people have tried to talk me out of it. People have come with all good intentions. I'm not saying they're bad. But it's just outside of their framework or it's outside of their faith level or it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't sound so kosher because it's always taking a risk. I want to tell you, if you're really going to do what God calls you to do, Sometimes it genuinely does mean that that decision has to be you and you alone. 
And so this morning when we come around the table, let us ask God, like Mary did, Lord, let us have instant obedience. Let us have instant obedience. God, when you speak, we will do in Jesus' name. Amen. So on the night that Jesus betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection, and provision. And so this morning when we come around the table, let us celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us. Let us celebrate what he's going to do in and through each believer in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for the price that was paid for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your covenant. But Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. And we ask you, please, to change our hearts. Lord, that we will be obedient and immediately obedient to your spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, that we will not hinder, we will not waver. But Lord, when you speak, we go, sir, we are reporting for duty. Lord, I pray right now for every Christian at the sound of my voice. That we will not try and compromise. We will not try and get out of it. We will not soften what you are calling us to do. But Lord, that we'll be instantly obedient. Thank you for the covenant. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, and directs us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. I thank you, Lord, that the Spirit of God that dwelleth in my body, quicken my mortal body. Lord, I thank you right now that I'm healed from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I command every symptom. Of sickness to leave me now in Jesus name. And everybody said amen and amen. Alright folks. I want to tell you right now. It's a glorious Wednesday. Alright. I trust that you are ready. Many of us really do need this mini Saturday as we call it. Alright. But I want to say that tonight. We are still busy with our small fellowship groups. Remember this. This is the second last week. Next week is shutdown. It is the last of each of the things for next week. Then we kick into holiday mode, okay? And then we go for the holiday program. So please get ready. Holiday program is going to be teaching in uh, communion in the morning and a teaching at 7 o'clock every single night, except for a few events which we'll tell you about. So please get ready. It's going to be an awesome, awesome break. I know that many have said to me that this has been a tough year. For me personally, it's been an absolutely horrific year. But you know what? I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that as we go through these things, God is in control. God loves us. And I'm still here. I praise God that as we sit now, um, what did I say today was 1,350 days. 1,350 days of communion. And be, by God's grace, I haven't missed one. I want to say this. It is by God's grace that I am here. So I am going to celebrate life this year. And Christmas means so much to me. And yes, I am going to go overboard. All right. Because I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to say thank you for keeping me alive. I shouldn't be here this year. But I am. All right. So this year has been a tough year for us as a family again. But you know what? God has been involved every step of the way. And so we are going to do what God calls us to do. Amen. All right, so let's let's pray. Before I pray, I want to just remind everybody, uh, Israel is definitely on. Month of March, I'm going to Israel. If you would like to join me, um, I've got two trips going. Please email us at Believers at Father's Heart. We'll send you the details. All right, so that you are aware of what's going on. But I'm telling you now, the guys have just come back. They said it's absolutely amazing. It is nowhere near as dangerous as they're making out. They're fighting on one section of the country. We stay away from there and we are fine. All right. What's also nice is everybody's staying away so you don't have to queue anywhere and you've got all this extra time. So I'm definitely going to Israel. Those who would like to know, okay, and those who would like to join me in March. May, I'm going to Turkey, the seven churches of the book of Revelation. 
All right, Joy Magazine have asked if I could come and help with the tour. So please, if you want to join me in Turkey, I'll let you know the details of that as well. Okay, let's get to praying. Lord, I pray right now for each and every believer in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that as we come to the end of the year, that you will give us the strength, the health, and the vitality that we need, Lord. Father, I thank you that we are going to do what you've called us to do. And Lord, that we are going to finish strong. I pray your blessings over the companies. Father, I pray that each and every company will be blessed. Lord, that as we build the altars, restrict the evil one. Lord, that the blessing will be seen in the businesses in Jesus' name. Father, we pray your blessing and anointing upon everything that each one of us are doing. Lord, give us the wisdom to finish wisely. And Lord, to also do what we need to do at this time. Father, I pray the blessing over South Africa, over the economy of South Africa. And Lord, I thank you that as we go into next year, Lord, that we will wage warfare in the spirit for our nation. And Lord, that we will raise up a prayer wall across this nation for our nation. In Jesus' name, I thank you for South Africa. I thank you for the blessing of South Africa and what you have in store for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over Israel right now. I pray for those hostages that haven't been released yet. Father, I pray right now that you'll do something supernatural, that they will be able to be released and come home. And Lord, I pray for those who have lost loved ones in this war. Father, I pray you'll comfort them and bless them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I pray for the wisdom that the commanders need to make this war end quickly in Jesus' name. Father, we release your blessing and power over each and every one in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, uh, to remind you, tonight is our uh, digital Zoom session at 7 o'clock. So please get ready. And if you'd like to be part of the fellowship group uh, digitally, please get ready for that. Amen. All right, let's get to our declaration. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I do not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life. So saints, I want to say go out with might, go out with valor, and go and do what Jesus Christ has called you to do. Amen. I love you lots.